So, I spent five great days in Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan, and I did it for $29. In this video, I will tell you the secrets of this budget-friendly adventure. I'll break down all my expenses and show you that even on a very low budget, it's possible to have a wonderful time exploring interesting places and meeting amazing people. So, let's start! Kyrgyzstan is a country with beautiful nature located in Central Asia. We were traveling to Kyrgyzstan with my French friend Nadezh. We were coming from Kazakhstan, crossing the border by land near the Kazakh village Kordai. The customs posts were not too crowded, so we passed them quickly. We decided to exchange some money at the border. It's always good to have some cash, because in this part of the world there are many places where they do not accept cards. The exchange rate was 86.5 Kyrgyzstani som for $1, though in the city it was slightly better. Bishkek is located close to the border, and to get there we took a shared taxi together with two other women. We paid 700 soms for two locations, which makes 175 soms per person, or around $2. At first, taxi drivers at the border wanted us to pay twice more, but as those women were locals, they knew the real prices there and they bargained down the price. Though later I found out that there is a minibus from the border to the city for only 35 cents. We decided to buy local SIM cards right away to have internet. We learned that they sell SIM cards almost in all shops, so when we saw one we decided to ask there. And they had them, though looking at the tiny shop from the outside I would never think about it. We bought SIM cards of the mobile operator Oshka. They were with packages for one week with 8 GB of internet for 145 sums. We have and, to uh, say goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> but we meet again, I'm sure. In yeah. Asia. This is a small world. Uh, yes. <laughs> I had to say goodbye to my friend, as we had different travel plans and we were going to stay in different places. Then I went to the place where I was going to stay, and it was this apartment. So the main secret how I managed to travel cheap is that I stay with Couchsurfing hosts, which is free accommodation. And as it's one of the major expenses while traveling, I save a lot of money staying with members of the Couchsurfing community. I agreed that I would stay with a Turkish host that was living and working in Bishkek. He was living there with his 11 years old son. I never come to a host home with empty hands, so this time I brought a bar of chocolate from my country that has a beautiful Kazakhstan flag on its cover. When I arrived, we went to a nearby cafe for dinner. I ordered meat that was very tasty. My host was very kind and didn't let me pay for the food. After that, we went for an evening walk in the city, enjoying the freshness after a hot summer day. I liked it that there were a lot of parks and trees in Bishkek, and the city center also looked very nice, with a big flag and a monument of Manas, a 10th century legendary warrior and the hero of the Kyrgyz people. Next morning we had breakfast at home. My host prepared traditional Turkish breakfast and the eggs were really delicious. After that he needed to go to work and I went to explore the city. Through Couchsurfing Hangouts I met with a cool guy Babar, who is originally from Pakistan but was a medical university student in Bishkek. It was his fifth year in Bishkek, so he already became like a local there. He showed me around the city. Bishkek has a lot of green areas, lots of monuments and statues, and old Soviet buildings. You know, many people when traveling try to go to only popular touristic places, but I like staying in some cities even if there are no super special places there. I like seeing the real life of people. I offered Babar to get some coffee, and as he was a student and was very friendly and eager to show me around, I felt like getting a coffee for him. 
So for the two coffees, I paid 414 soms. We had a very nice walk in the streets of Bishkek. And you know, for me, it was as if I'm in my home country, Kazakhstan. These countries are very similar in terms of culture. And as they used to be both in the Soviet Union, in both countries, almost all people also speak Russian apart from the national languages. Kazakh and Kyrgyz languages are also similar, being from the same family of Turkic languages. I really liked the idea of this park. People of different ages come to play chess here. We also passed galleries with drawings of local artists and some souvenir shops. In the evening we went to an interesting underground bar that didn't have a name and wasn't on the map. It had a nice atmosphere. We met with one mock-out surfer there and I ordered ramen noodles for dinner. The next morning I cooked eggs with tomatoes and cheese for breakfast. My host left home early and he said that I can eat anything I find in the fridge. He said that I shouldn't be shy and I don't need to ask about it. It was very kind of him. And of course, another secret of spending less money while traveling is cooking at home rather than eating out. After breakfast we met again with Babar and first we went to visit a beautiful Holy Resurrection Cathedral, which is a Russian Orthodox church. It had a very nice atmosphere. After that, we took a minibus and went to Ozh Bazaar, which is one of the most famous and vibrant markets in Bishkek. The bustling marketplace offers a kaleidoscope of sights, sounds and flavors, making it a must-visit destination for both locals and tourists. Here you can find local goods and products, fruits and vegetables, spices and herbs, dried fruits and nuts. Also, you can buy souvenirs, clothing and try local street food there. You can also interact with friendly locals, observe their daily life and immerse yourself in the vibrant atmosphere of the market. I decided to buy some products for home. So I got bananas, peaches, eggs, sunflower oil and bread. Babar also bought a national Kyrgyz drink Chalap and gave me some to try. It is fermented milk drink, made from sour milk, water and salt. I'm not a big fan of such milk products, but it wasn't bad. After leaving the products at home, we met with one more guy from Couchsurfing and went to the National Museum. I like visiting museums in the cities I go to, to learn about their history and heritage. The National Museum is situated in the heart of Bishkek on the central square. In the museum, there are collections related to archaeology, ethnography, history, art and more. Some of the notable items on display include ancient artifacts, traditional Kyrgyz clothing, jewelry, musical instruments and historical documents. The museum provides valuable insights into the history and culture of the Kyrgyz people. Exhibits showcase the nomadic heritage of the Kyrgyz people, their traditions and the evolution of their society over the centuries. There is also a big section devoted to the Soviet times. What is also super cool about the museum is that there is a tourist information center there, where absolutely for free a very nice girl speaking very good English can help you with any questions concerning your travel in Kyrgyzstan. 
They have a lot of free materials like different brochures and the map of Kyrgyzstan with best travel destinations marked on it. They will help you plan your trip around the country, tell you about different transportation options and in general will try to help you with any issues you have even calling to local companies trying to solve your problems. The girl was very helpful. So I think if you start exploring Kyrgyzstan from Bishkek, this should be the first place to visit. And that evening I decided to spend at home working on my videos. The next morning, me, my host son and a cool Indian guy Sharad from Couchsurfing went to explore the national park Ala Archa, located 40 kilometers away from Bishkek. We came with Yandex Taxi to the entrance post. It wasn't too expensive and we shared the costs. And from the post we decided to try our luck and hitchhike to the actual territory of the park that was 11 kilometers away. We were lucky and the truck driver kindly stopped to give us a ride. We waited for around 10 minutes. This way we saved money because if we entered the territory of the park with the taxi, we would have to pay around $8 for the car entry and four more dollars for the remaining distance. And when you enter the territory of the national park walking, you don't have to pay for the entrance at all. The payment is only for cars. The truck driver brought us to the parking lot next to the actual entrance to the park's territory. There are shops and cafes there, together with some entertainment activities. We decided to do some hiking. Alarcha National Park is situated in the Tian Shan mountain range and it's a popular destination for locals and tourists. The park is renowned for its dramatic alpine scenery, including rugged peaks, glaciers, lush valleys and pristine mountain rivers. It also offers a network of hiking and trekking trails suitable for various skill levels. We hiked up the mountains, that was pretty tiring, but gave us the opportunity to enjoy amazing views. The landscapes were really gorgeous. I took some fruits, vegetables and boiled eggs from home, so we had a little picnic with a very nice view. And our trail was leading to a beautiful waterfall. Hiking back down was much easier. And there was another road leading to a very beautiful mountain river. Even though the weather in Bishkek was very hot, around 35 degrees Celsius, in this park the temperature was very pleasant, about 23-25 degrees. On our way back we were lucky again. We decided to hitchhike back to Bishkek and the very first car stopped. A very nice young couple picked us up and they were very kind and brought us right next to our homes. That evening I needed to move to some other place and my couchsurfing friend Babar kindly agreed to host me. Luckily he was living very close to my first host's place, only 5 minutes away by walk. I put my things to Babar's home and in the evening we met for dinner with my Indian companion Sharat from Alarcha trip. We went to a buffet where they have different kinds of ready home food. You can see everything and choose what you want. Sharat said that he wants to treat us and didn't let us pay for the food. We had very interesting conversations with the guys and it was a nice end of the day. On the next day, my new host Babar, with his housemates and fellow students from his university, cooked a very delicious Pakistani dish, dal chawal. It translates to lentil rice. And as you could guess, this dish is made of those ingredients. It is lentil stew and basmati rice dish. Usually they eat very spicy food, but this time, as I told them that I cannot physically eat food that is hot, as I'm not used to it, they cooked it without hot pepper.
The guys also cooked a vegetable salad. The dish turned out to be really delicious. By the way, Babar had a very sweet cat Mina at home that made it very cozy. She was very gentle and liked to sit on you, sing cat songs and do your massage. Then we went to a supermarket as I wanted to buy a watermelon. It was in August, the best season for it, and this is one of the tastiest things for me. That watermelon was super sweet and delicious. In the evening we organized a couch surfing meetup in a cafe, where we got acquainted with other cool travelers. And two of the guys were planning to go to a very interesting destination in Kyrgyzstan on the next day. I told them, what if we go together? The more people, the more fun! As a result, four people decided to set off on the road the next day. But this is another story, it will be in my next video. As you can see from my expenses, it is possible to enjoy traveling even with a very low budget. Actually, it was possible to spend even less if I cooked more at home and didn't eat out that much. I hope I could inspire you to travel more because it will widen your horizons and will make your life much more happy. And you can support me with your like and subscription to my channel. See you in my next videos! Bye-bye!